Two new studies have described a unique and previously unobserved phenomenon now being reported as an upside down star in some places. Actually, two of these stars. Astronomers have identified two stars in a new paper which appears to have unique and different makeup and characteristics from what we understand about stars. We know that stars fuse lighter elements in their core to form heavier elements and the lighter ones are higher up towards the surface with the heavier ones building up in a star's core. But the two newly discovered stars seem to have heavier elements like carbon and oxygen also on their surface as well as lighter elements like helium. This is highly unusual because transporting heavier elements like carbon to the surface is not easy. Another team in the second paper has figured out how these two stars could have possibly formed. In this video, we'll take a look at what these two new strange stars are and the explanations for how they formed. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Stars fuse elements in their course. Stars like our sun are young and they're still only fusing the lightest element hydrogen to form helium. Each time a fusion event occurs, a bit of energy is released. And in stars, this occurs billions and billions of times a second. Because the star is so big, there is so much matter, there is also convection. Hot material rises up in lighter stars and cool stuff falls down towards the core, so the whole star's material is available for recycling. High mass stars fuse quickly and run out of fuel quicker. Low mass stars live longer, fusing hydrogen for billions and trillions of years. In high mass stars, the cores are denser with more pressure. Convection is lowered, so the whole star is not available for material. As the core builds up with fused helium, soon the star will start to run out of hydrogen. Helium can then be fused to carbon, sometimes even oxygen and neon, but under very high temperatures and pressure. And these heavy elements will build up in the core. Helium converting to carbon releases a lot of energy too. And the more heavy the elements are that are being fused, the more energy is required to fuse them in the first place. In heavy mass stars, this occurs in layers because convection is reduced. The innermost layer is fusing the heaviest elements and releasing tremendous amount of energy and heat, heating up the rest of the star, leading to outer layers fusing lighter and lighter elements that they are running out of. If a star is about eight times more than the sun's mass, carbon can fuse into neon, magnesium and sodium. Neon fusion can create oxygen and superheat the star. And then oxygen fusion will create silicon. Finally, silicon fusion creates iron in a matter of just hours. After that, it's a completely different story because iron fusion means that the energy required to fuse is so high that the star basically requires energy from the rest of the star. This process occurs in just a fraction of a second and the star collapses, forming a neutron star or if the star had been much heavier, more massive, it would have formed a black hole. Neutron star and black holes are two types of compact objects we know and the third type is a white dwarf which is what is left over when low mass stars die. Hydrogen fusion is done and the star will start to expand to a red giant phase fusing helium, carbon and oxygen. The buildup of carbon and oxygen will cause the star to shed its outer layers in a nebula, leaving behind a white dwarf as a remnant with these two elements, carbon and oxygen. Slightly bigger than these white dwarfs are subdwarfs. Subdwarfs are old stars that fuse helium still in their cores. But the two new stars that astronomers have found did not typically resemble helium burning subdwarfs or even typical white dwarfs. The stars had a surface that was rich in helium and carbon and oxygen, which is highly unusual and very inexplicable. If there was still helium on the surface, the carbon and oxygen should be in the core, not on the surface. But nearly 40% of this subdwarf's surface was made of carbon and hydrogen. So the second team of astronomers in their second paper worked on figuring out how these stars could have been formed. 
Turns out that under the appropriate conditions, a heavier helium fusing white dwarf could actually interact with a carbon and oxygen fusing white dwarf. They could gravitationally merge together and then create a new kind of hot sub dwarf that has properties which are a mix of both. The two original stars used to orbit each other in the past and they were a binary star system. But over time, they spiraled towards each other and came close enough to where they ripped each other apart or the more massive star tore apart the less heavy one. The more massive one would have been the helium white dwarf, which would have consumed the lighter carbon and oxygen fusing dwarf. And the material from the second star is then just splattered or mixed with the first on its surface. The astronomers also say that Previously, these two white dwarfs were dead. They were not really fusing anymore to produce energy. But once they collided, the fusion reignited. And thus, we have the first instance of what is the upside down star, a very confusing new kind of star. This conclusion is sort of just theory because there's no observed record of two such white dwarfs colliding. This guess is likely the best explanation because it answers all the questions and is very much possible in terms of occurrence in reality. But now, what astronomers don't know is how often are such stars born? The more we study the skies, the more such stars we hope to find in the future. And we will soon have telescopes and gravitational wave detectors that will be detecting the merger of hundreds of binary stars across the skies.